live, man. We real live right here. Road shows. Yes, right here sir. Right on 14th Street. Live and in person. Come Look. Come on, man. We in Hoop Dreams. Right man. now, we doing it a little different. You know, we doing it a little different hey, this we time. we live today, man. Come on, man. Let's go ahead and show what we doing today, man. Look. Let's get to it, man. Rogers. What? I need to know. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I need a new boo. I need them new shoes. I need the new loot. I need the new coupe. I want me a new new. I need me a new boo. I want me a new new. Give me that new new. Live right here with my boy Colton. Yo, so I appreciate it. Again. What's up, guys? How you doing? I appreciate it again for like just having us here and this and creating this like creative space right here. You Thank know, you. and first we want to kind of start off with what's your inspiration behind all of this? So the inspiration behind basically uh, doing half an exhibition and half doing my art is pretty much that all my in, most of my interest is in the exhibi exhibition production of art shows and the gathering of people for art, but then I have a whole other interest that has to do with the creation of my paintings, my sculpture itself. So that's almost like the whole inspiration from it as a whole, is doing it DIY and having everything from me because when I create the exhibition and the artwork together, it's really like, it all comes together a lot better than if the two parts are separate and created by different people. That's yeah. hard, you know I mean? man. And that allows for me to bring in other people into the mix so that everything's created from an artistic role and not a commercial role. And that's when you come in here and you feel the vibes and it's different than most art galleries. That's the reason why, like, that's what I want to do. I want to bring a different vibe to the arts here. I want to bring a different vibe to, like, art production in general. Yeah, and, that, that, and I feel like it was a great thing mm -hmm. you highlighted just saying, not the corporate, but more so just highlight and focus on the artistic uh, exactly things and, and, that to... and the and like the event aspect of a right. lot of people viewing this art together, drinking, whatever, yeah, having like, a good time, a vibe, whatever else you want to do, like exactly like having a vibe and having the art and putting that art on a platform then has the ability to bring more artists onto different platforms. So right. say like being able to grab people that haven't been able to exhibit, right. to exhibit. Right. And because they can't go or because they don't have the experience to go to a regular gallery, being able to deal with another artist mm -hmm. who's doing, who's creating exhibitions, for me is a lot less intimidating. Nice. And that's why, that's why I wanted to do it like from me from the ground up, only because only because it was more intimidating for me to go to the galleries. Right. But for me to do everything from the ground up, for some reason, it's no it's pressure. A lot, there's no right. pressure. And you know what I mean? Having the ability to fail Literally. is even better, even a better situation. For sure. And my only question is, so you started with hoops. You played hoops yeah, in yeah, high yeah. school. How did you get to the sculpting? Because, like, doing sculptures and shit, yeah. most niggas not doing that. <laughs> they don't, they don't do that sculptures. Yeah, you'd be, you be, you be, like... Um, very surprised. There's a lot of ballers who like art and are in photo photography. But in high school, I had to kind of make a decision, obviously, like what I was going to do after high school. And I knew I wasn't going to do anything else because I just got so bored and I'm very ADHD in the fact that I move on from one thing to the next. Yeah. And that's the part of the aspect of the show being a month. And then I'll go on to the next show and spend only a month. So all the work in this show, like all these paintings, like it all got put together in a month. Wow. So like, that's yeah. So that's part of the that's part of the practice is being able to make a deadline, create the project, finish it, and move on to the next one. Because the more projects I can create, the more people I can put on the platform and get more people to know their work and create and connect and all that sort of jazz. Right. So no, that's cool. With that, yeah, yeah. What I was gonna say though, with that month, is it kind of stressing, kind of try to compile everything? Oh yeah, yeah. That's together? what I love though. The energy yeah. of that, like compared to say when we were all locked down, sitting at home, like. The Hell month yeah. long and the and the stress is like what I craved for a year. Right. You know what I mean? So I like through COVID I was like researching, calling as many agents as I can just to be able to do something like this. So for like the hundredth call or like the hundred and fiftieth call to a different uh, real estate agent. Finally, somebody gives me the chance to come into a space and make it an art production space. Yeah. So that's basically the same. That's the same practice that's going to go into the next thing. Right. It's just getting out there, trying to get a space. And then, you know, running the back and trying to get more people involved and the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. My last question. So for anybody who, because it seems to me that, you know, most people um, ex 
like they kind of talk about why they can't do something, but yeah. you're a testimony as to why you should just go out and do it. Oh, so like, what is yes. your basically your words of advice to the people who like might not necessarily know how to just get started? Yeah, learn. You have the internet. Go on the internet. There's YouTube videos for everything. Yeah. If you want, if you look, if you go into say this production or any other production, they're like, this is way over my head. Six months ago, I was looking in back alleys, and I would have done the same production all the way in Maryland in a back alley in like a car in a car district. Exactly. If, if that was the situation I was in, this is. This space is really just luck of the draw, the stars lining up. But if you're gonna be successful, you need to put in the work and wait for the stars to line up because that's when you're gonna create something good. Right. Because you have to let the, you have to like almost luck play in, but if you're not doing the work and that luck passes you by, you're not gonna get any of it. Gotcha. So you gotta put in the work and you gotta learn as much as you can. And I think a important thing he said too, that he said basically, even if he was gonna be in a back alley, he's gonna have the same type of production. Oh, and completely. that's the thing. Even if you're in a different location, if you think you're not at that level you want to be, still you got to put forth your 100% oh, yeah. uh, effort. Because every single time is practice right. for the next time. Yep. Because because exhibitions only last months, two months, like they're not year-long things. Correct. You have to create it and then produce the next one. So that allows you even more practice. Yeah. So when I'm making this one, I'm adding in more things for the next one in my mind. Yeah. Or even written on paper, written on my computer, everything like that. Yeah. There's more parts and more parts until you have a an organism that can't go wrong. Yeah. Because you go in and you have that plan. And that's professionalism. That's that's how people build careers. That's how people build companies. Is they right. start putting on these attachments onto themselves. Like outletting um, food, outletting lights, like learning more about all these different things yep. will make you even more ready for the next one. Message! Me yes, sir. Message! Say that message. Look, I'm telling you. My boy Colin just dropped jams. Colin gave us nothing but jams, man. Hey, appreciate you. Yeah, man. This is dope, man. Thank you. Okay, guys. Yo. Thank you guys for coming. Hey, appreciate it. appreciate it. More to come. We gonna get right back at y'all. Let's get to it. Man, we here with my nigga Sloop. Hey, man, look, this yeah, been my dog for a minute, my brother for a while. And look, he already cooking up. Hey, here we go. Yeah. Hey, look, so first, first off, we gonna start off, cause me and him, we both went to tech. We both was in the engineering pathway. How you get to becoming an artist like this, man? Tell me this. Well, for real, I I always knew how to draw and stuff like that for real, for real. Right. So, like I always had a little flavor up in me and shit. Um, this shit started as a little hustle for real, for real, on some broke college student shit. But then I, I just tapped in a little harder, you know what I'm saying? People start fucking with me, encouraged me to do more, and shit. I start start catching the wave. Start catching the wave with that shit, bro. Hey, listen, cause I ain't gonna lie, and I've seen this growth have been getting crazy with it, bro. And it's just like. So tell me, like, what's some of the challenges that you kind of face, like, towards this shit? Well, first, I, I ain't go to art school, so I'm a self-taught artist, so that's probably... Yeah, that's yeah. probably the hardest part, go, you know what I'm go, saying? Go, go, oh, go, go ahead, say it again, Stacks. Entrepreneur. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. Gotta sip to that one. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, wasn't, that wasn't the easiest shit, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing the technical part about art, not knowing a lot of technique and a lot of history, so I had to do a lot of research, make sure I know what I'm talking about if I'm going to take people money and, you know, paint shit. I don't just do it for fun. I try to make it like a, a tool, you know what I'm saying? I like writing papers and shit like that, so like the paintings, it's like writing pieces, written work and shit like that, just right. just with markers and shit, markers and spray paint and paint. Um, one of my main, my main question is, you know, like, how did, how does the, where does the inspiration come from? Because to me, right, this to the average eye, it just seems like he just said, you know what? I'm about to just do this today. You know what I'm saying? But I know I'm pretty sure it's some, it's some uh, background to that. So like, how do you decipher some that? Critical thinking to that. I mean, I think the easiest, the easiest thing I can do is, is paint, paint what I know, paint my experience. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Northeast DC, Langdon Park. Hey. So quick little hood well, stack. Yeah. Quick little hood stack. Hey, shout out Langdon Park. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Lane. So. A lot of my, a lot of my beginnings, a lot of my history come from basketball. You know what I'm saying, and and being in the community and getting to know people just at random times and shit like that. So with the art, I'm just telling stories. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling stories right here. We got the hoop dreams, 
uh, exhibition and shit. Yes, sir. It was just perfect, you know what I'm saying? For me being an ex hooper, I used to hoop at tech and shit like that. It's just telling the, the story of a young DC kid, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? For real. For real I, think, I think art. Art is a rich nigga sport, you know what I'm saying? Hey. It's a rich nigga sport. Oh, God. In my name, Slew, I got the, the S as a dollar sign, you know what I'm saying? And that shit is just about like, this shit worth more than money. The stories, the experiences, they all worth more than money, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's the creativity aspect that art has been missing. Like, you feel me? Everything has been like money oriented. Yeah. Everything has been money influenced. But like, it really seemed like you do this for the love of it. Yeah, right. sure. Hell yeah, I do this to tell. Tell, tell a story that, you know, my people couldn't. You know what I'm so, saying? There's a lot of people, especially all of us being from D.C. and shit, that don't make it to our age. You know what I'm saying? So stories got to be told. And I ain't going to lie. Like, and it, I think it's kind of amazing that the fact that he's becoming an artist, kind of standing out. Because literally, we all grew up in the same generation of high school. We understood, like, in high school, really, you just really focused on those sports, girls, and other stuff. Right here, he took the artistic path and kind of paved in his own way. You know, and then other people can kind of follow. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Yeah. Oh, now, hey, so now, so tell us, like, more about this particular piece right here. What's the background for this one? What's, like, that conception to it? So my man Justin hit me up and was like, you should live paint. I'm on a whole little live painting tour right now. Justin hit me up. He people again. What type of time I was on? Like, come out here. We got a whole joint called Hoop Dreams. Like I said, I'm an ex hooper myself. Um, but in this joint right here, it's like it's like removing what I knew. You know what I'm saying? So I got the hooper shit right here. I got the little draft they picked. I've been wearing the suit all summer, a suit with no shirt on, my hat, my little chucks, on my Kanye shit, you know what I'm saying, like I got drafted, because I really did want to, you know what I'm saying, hoop past what I did, but I got the mannequin that that, that represent kind of letting go of what you know, you know what I'm saying, and chopping the top off, you know, unlearning to relearn type shit, you know what I'm saying, so yeah, I was a hooper, but it's way more I got to talk about, you know what I'm saying, it's way more shit to talk about, you know what I'm saying, as a black person, so... Hooping just like everything, just expressive shit, you know what I'm saying? So right here, I just got me on some draft day shit. And I got three men, because three of my men that I that I lost type shit, you know what I'm saying? Yes, but for love, for love. Yeah, and it's a it's a dude on Instagram from my neighborhood or that used to be in my neighborhood, Lethal Shooter. Oh for real? Lethal, for real? lethal shooter, yeah. That's, hey that's, sneaky. Okay, now, I, I definitely, I definitely remember Lethal Shooter from DC. Yeah, so yeah. this shit just like that's what it's all gonna be called is Lethal Shooter, like you know what I'm saying? And, all of us can be a target, you know what I'm saying? And the victim is like, you know, our naive dreams and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, listen. Lethal Shooter, my boy. Go ahead and come purchase this. Yeah, top in, top in. And now that was going to say, I think when you say that relearn and, uh, and, and you know saying, unlearn and yeah, things unlearn of that nature, that, that's definitely key for a lot of basketball dudes. Cause you think about it, a lot of basketball players, they only think about basketball when they get to that peak in college. Yeah. They don't understand anything else when they in the real world because you always been practicing. Around basketball. Everything yeah. comes back to basketball. The work ethic that you put in the motherfucking art, same as you putting getting shots up in the gym, you hear me? You got to put the extra time in because it's somebody working harder than you. Yeah. Hoop dreams, rap dreams, art all dreams, they all change. It all works. Because at, the the, at the end of the day, you got to put in that work to get to where you want to go. Real spill. If it take just like practice, you're going to have the motherfucker put in the time to research and shit. It might not be. You feel me? It start from the ground up, man. It start from the beginning, man. My man tell you, he just understood that this is his life. He just found a way to express his life in a cool ass way. Oh, don't go to the NBA. Oh, exactly. <laughs> then look, then it, look, and then G said, you even think about it, you know what I'm saying? Just like he said, this self art, this self talk. He was in the he was in the gym, learning how to motherfucking perfect his craft before he just jumped out there. That's what motherfuckers fail to realize sometimes. You gotta motherfucking practice. You gotta perfect your craft before you get out there. Yeah. I know y'all drunk, because I know I'm yeah. Hey, look, 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 my last question, because there's a lot of people who hoop, we talked to my man Colton before, so for the niggas who hoop and looking for something else to find in life, you know what I'm saying, that next yeah. step, if hooping don't work, what advice would you give to them? Explore. Yeah. You, you gotta try different shit out, you know what I'm saying, you gotta find what you're passionate about, I seen a video earlier, like, you know, you gotta find 
what you can do every day, just like hooping, that you can work hard at, that you don't get tired of working for it. You know what I'm saying? And you got to find something that contributes and adds value to your community. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You got to find out how the same way you bring crowds out and all that shit, how you could bring black people together. And I, I keep bringing, uh, emphasizing that, bring black people together because that shit is important. You know what I'm saying? That shit is it's important and that's our duty. For sure. You know what I'm Using that same contribution with your talent just make a big difference. Hey, listen, hey. Yes, sir. Rogue to that. Shout out to my dog, Slu, man. My brother for life. Yeah, hey, listen. Yeah. Hey, go one more time. Oh, yeah. Now, listen. D.N. Stacks, look. Here we all be another interview coming up. We be back with you. Yo, hey, we are back. We are Roll back. Show hey, podcast, hey, man. Hey, hey, listen, last interview is a damn wait. At the day at the exhibit, man. Listen, we got our boy. We got the nigga Jay Carter. Two can shoot live in full effect. What's up, man? Say something for the people. What's good? What's up, man? Shout out Rogue Soul, man. Appreciate y'all y'all coming through. It's all love. Oh, day, one, day ones, day ones. Day ones, man. So I don't watch Carter real life. It's my dog. I don't watch Carter from hooping and turn into this master photographer and shit. How the fuck did this come about, man? Man, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, bro, the angle was really at first coaching. Um, really just wanted to figure out how I could network and get into that space. I wasn't really trying to be like, you know, an all-time photographer. So, I mean, to be honest, it kind of just took its own little turn. Like, I, I started doing it, kind of found like a little love for it, a little passion for it, and I just stuck with it, you know, to, to the point where now I'm trying to put my stuff in shows and, and take that next level and go NBA. I mean, because like, basketball has, you know, always been a passion of mine. Right. So, I mean, to be able to be on the other side of the court, like, you know, whether it's coaching or on that lens side, it's, it's just love to be around the game. So, definitely, so. definitely. So, okay, so as far as you taking the pictures, like, how do you determine shots? So how do you determine, like, what's the moment that you're trying to catch? So, so basically, so basically, um, let me go. I'm gonna go. Let me take it back. So in high school, take it back. in high take it back. school, take it back. in a play, in high, you can you can see it on the little paper over there. In high school, they was chanting in the game, two can't shoot." Oh, oh shit! They, that was they chant. They was chanting. Mm -hmm. I was breaking. They was not fucking with me the whole game. So, so, use that shit to face. So, so, so look, so now I, I, I took that. I took that name. Like you said, use it as motivation. You know, try to capture the best images, the the most, you know, all the images that kind of show a passion for the game, a love for the game that you know that people don't usually see or, or talk about, or if you're not really in that space, whether it's the media space or the real, you know, basketball space. So I just try to, you know, take it, take the take the pictures from a, a basketball player's eye. Like, how would I want to be perceived in a picture if I'm hooping? Or, like, what moments do I want to be caught for myself if I'm the hooper? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. That was really just the perception or the, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the angle I was trying to take at the whole photography, the basketball photography space. Because it was not like anyone really inspired me to do it. It was kind of just like, how can I network? Right. So, and uh, my, my question is, like, being involved into What's like up, the, the film. What's up, Keith? What's up, Being involved in the film. Bro, so it's live, man. Hey, hey. All right, man. Being involved in the film and industry and things of that nature. Like, let's talk about the basketball world, the basketball network and stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so, so basically, when it comes to film, I wouldn't say, like, I wouldn't say, like, I'm like a film kind of sure, but, like, I appreciate, I appreciate good film. Like, so whether, like, like, I've made a few documentaries, um, I, I wouldn't call them documentaries, I'm more like interviews, and I've got to always try to tell someone's story. Whether it be from their perspective, you know what I'm saying, using my lens or their or my perspective using, you know what I'm saying, their their lens. Like that makes sense. So I, I try to get guys to tell their stories and, and be comfortable because I try to go for guys who I know personally. So it's not like, you know, uh, not it's not as organic. You know, guys just interviewing whoever and it's not organic. But you know, as we as as I move up, I'm gonna try to go for people that I don't know so I can get more comfortable and, and be in that space and try to make the best content as possible. Because everybody got a story. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's high school, like younger, college, NBA, or, or coaches, or, or, or stuff like that. Like, everybody got a story to tell. So I'm just trying to be that guy that can, you know, help them tell their story and get, and get it out there. So 
And I think an important thing that you said is that you want to kind of get like more uncomfortable, finding more people that you don't know yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. I think that's great with your growth especially, but also just network and kind of find other avenues as well yeah. with the basketball. Because yeah. you coming from the basketball world, you know, you mm -hmm. live that, you play that, so you understand the shots, you understand how they feel, and mm -hmm. can just expand your network right. and things of that nature. So tell me, like, what's your overall, I would say your overall goal? At the end of the day, like, when it's all said and done, of your your company because it's not just with photography, it's right. entire media, it's yeah. entire film thing. Absolutely. So what's your overall goal? So I would I would say if I'm able to, you know, have my own own net like on my own company like my own media outlet whether like i wouldn't i wouldn't i'm not trying to compare it but like if we're doing something like uninterrupted or whether it's like some podcast stuff kind of like what y'all are doing whether it's like i can ha i can be able to t touch all avenues and all under one umbrella like if that's if that's if that's something i can do one day whether i'm, I'm taking pictures one day doing the interview the next you know what i'm saying making the films the next like you know real like movie type documentaries like you know you remember the through the fire sebastian right, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. stuff like if i can do something like that yeah. you know and it's on espn or like what you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm just getting those regular you know deals situations that's how i deal like i don't really want to be freelance forever but if i can be freelance at a point where i'm just comfortable with what everything that i'm doing and, and people are appreciating what i'm doing basically kind of building that Respect the hub of yeah. everything right there, the yeah. basketball players. Like, yeah. I, I want to get to a point where my, if my name's on it, people is going to they going to come look at it. They're going to see what it's about. Just like this slang, it's just like the ball is like, and I'm trying to compare, yeah. but yeah. more so just you hear those names and it's respected. The Spielbergs, like yeah. all that stuff like that. Feel me, you know what I'm saying? saying? not trying to go basic. The fuck? Like, I don't want to put a limit on it. You know what I'm saying? I can easily put a cap on it. Like, I want to be the best photographer in the NBA, but I feel like that's too... That's too small. Service level, man. That's too small. Because the thing about it is that most people don't do that. I always tell you I love what you're doing. It's the fact that you are taking the steps to, you know, broadcast your work in a different element. Yeah. It's not just being seen on Instagram or being yeah. seen from, you know, you feel me? That's, that's not, not enough. enough. It's that's not. not. Enough. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather the random eye come down the street, come in here and, like, appreciate my art then you know some some people like my boys like oh gang like guys i know like they're gonna mess with it because they mess with me but i'd rather the person that they don't know me and they want to get to know me because they see what i'm doing with my art so i was gonna say i think that's important too because a lot of people they try to get the approval of their friends and the approval of people that they know you know that's gonna be a biased perspective so you like i want to make sure that the, the person who doesn't know me can understand where I'm coming from and they can respect it, they can kind of understand that. You know, just as much as the person that I do know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want my stuff to work, speak for itself. My last question. Out of all of these, which one is your favorite? If I'm being blatantly honest. Blatantly honest. Because I can tell you mine. Yeah. I can tell you mine too. I can tell, I want... me, I can tell me. So look, I go with, I go with, I go with Free the Hoops. Free the Hoops right here. This is favorite right here. I'm gonna tell you exactly how it went. Um, it was prime pandemic. Like we wasn't supposed to be outside the house. We weren't supposed to be doing nothing, but I had an itch to use my camera. It was just sitting there. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just walk around the hood, take some 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 pictures or whatever I see. Like I'm walking through alleys, you know what I'm saying? Like I just took a little tour around the hood that I, I wouldn't usually take. And I ended up walking to the local court down the street and capturing the image that you know some people seem to gravitate to um and i just was trying to you know i was like dang like if people really mess with me on stuff like that maybe i don't have to just stick to you know guys with a basketball in their hand right. like it can be you know it can be something that tells more of a story you know what i'm saying everyone knows like man i ain't touched the basketball in a month and I, i'm trying to touch a basketball like when's right. the next time i'm gonna touch a basketball so it's like damn all right well free the hoops because the, it was really locked up that's real good, though. In it, but it's like, but, the, but the, to be honest with you, like, but to be honest with you, it's like the whole hoop dreams is. We, I'm trying to just trying to tell a story through that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? We talk about guys like Terrence Clark lost their life early. Yeah. That's a part of the hoop dream. Everybody right. knows somebody that was, you know, chasing towards their goal and, and it was cut short. You know what I'm saying? A teacher, the student, you know, new balance, but I, I call it finding balance. You know what I'm saying? And free the hoops. Toddler ball, you know, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Started when playing when you was three, four years old, you know what I'm saying? And we got, we got Jerry Stackhouse, the recruiter. So it's like, 
not just because it's Jerry Sackhouse, but he's really at these tournaments recruiting these kids to take their dream to the next level. So I'm just trying. I was just trying to implement some, you know, that that really went with the hoop dream. Like even my photo over there, y'all can't probably see it, but chose like I call it the chosen one. You know, he the top guy in the country. And everyone knows someone who was that top guy on their team or top guy in the area. Like they always felt like there was a lot of pressure being that guy. Sure. Like that's a part of the hoop dream. You gotta you gotta deal with those pressures and, and, and elevate and take that step to the next level to be the guy you wanna be. And I feel like you can carry that to any type of like any life. You feel I me? Mean? Like you always gonna have that person who I got someone damn is like better or more hard working than they than you. You gotta deal with that pressure and still find your own lane. Not worry about them, yeah. but develop your own your self. Own lane. Yeah. Exactly. Well, be what's, the best what's, you be. what's your favorite one? My favorite is this one right here. Because you know, gonna I'm going to tell you why. You know when we hoop, man, when you hit a tough bucket, man, ah! That's how you feel. For real, though. Like, that's a representation of, like, basketball right there. No cap. Because I know when you see that, when you get that and one, it's all over. Y'all see that? Y'all see that man Faze? I went look. I'm trying to tell you. Ah, that's how you really feel though. And he captured the moment like in its entirety right there. Yeah, and I was gonna say G shit. Like you can kind of just see that's an enjoyment at an early age. That's why I really love that. Like right here, like these two pictures. Like just the simple fact that at an early age you can see how focused you can see their love for the you can game. See passion. Just really just and golfing right there. This is where it all starts. He just watching, just understanding what's going on, just and feeling that emotion. He need in the game. He just watching on the shoulder for the coach shoulder. Yeah. He feeling it. And both right man right here. It's just you see how focused so locked in he is. You see how like people enjoy the love for the sport. That's why I call it the teacher and the student. Everybody has that coach, whether it's football, basketball, tennis, whatever, soccer. Everybody got that coach that you know really felt like you felt that they really taught you the game. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got that. So, I mean, yeah. not even just sports. It's like anything in life. Like, if you was fucking playing the piano, nigga, you got that piano teacher that you really felt that taught you how to play. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or whatever it is. Like, you know, everyone got that role model, that that figure that really taught them what, what the craft is about and took the time to teach you what the craft is about. Right. We're always going to be spending in the day. So, that's a part, so all a part of the dream, bro. I'm telling you. All the All the part of the dream, my man. Two can shoot. Two, two can, can shoot. shoot. Look, two can look, can shoot. All, yeah. great, all great interviews today, man. We want to like, appreciate it, oh, man. This is family with me, man. Hey, look, shout out Rogue Souls, man. I appreciate y'all coming through, man. Always, so, man. Love. I love, look. They stop. We out. Let's get to it. Nigga, what's up, baby boy? Tell the shorty, come on over. Come on over. She get the rubbing on me. I lose my composure. Lose my composure. She my rider, scooper and a poser. Love is a drug and shorty. I don't wanna be.